They told me. Son, you're special. You were born to do great things. Wait, am I smoking on a plane? You know what? They were right. I'm so glad people can't smoke on planes nowadays. God. Must have got a cheap flight. What the hell are we? This game has an amazing intro. One of the best. <laughs> uh, chat, would you kindly subscribe with Twitch Prime, please? Gods or kings, only man. New subscriber. Well, normally I wouldn't, but industry. Art. I noticed there weren't any subtitles. Let's turn those on. I don't need art subtitles. I can read the art. Okay. But art subtitles off on. Industry. Science. The other one was... Art. Now, normally I wouldn't just get into some random machine, but I don't really have much of a choice. The plane crashed. to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. A city where 
the artist would not fear the censor, where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality, where the great would not be constrained by the small. And with the sweat of your brow, rapture can become your city as well. I guess the ocean is kind of not anyone's own land, isn't it? All good things of this earth flow into the city. Yeah, so if you build an entire city in the ocean, you don't really, no country can really boss you around. That woman, though. We're gonna need to draw her out of hiding, but you're gonna have to trust me. The Vita Chamber. We're not your property. Let it in. Let us ascend. Ryan doesn't own us. All best for your travels now denied. Oh, they can't leave the city. He trapped them all inside. Got me a wrench. Kind of holding that in a weird That's way. That's what the book says. You gotta be rich. Who's 
say Are that. Okay, hold on. The the horizontal sensitivity is very low. Let me try to turn this up a couple notches. Having to like rotate, go across my mouse a couple of times just to rotate the camera. Oh, electro bolt. Why would you ever? Why would you inject a pitcher of Kool-Aid into your veins? This little fish looks like he just had his cherry popped. Wonder if he's still got some Adam on him. Yeah. Let's talk weak. You're a weak chopper. This little fish ain't worth telling it with no big daddy. Yellow always had been. You'll be no better off with Metal Daddy, little fish. See you floating. Look, Mr. Bubbles, it's an angel. I can see light coming from his belly. Wait a minute, he's still breathing. It's all right. I know he'll be an angel soon. Is there a way to get rid of the background on the subtitles? There's like a box that appears when subtitles appear. And who says boyo? Let's check the garbage. First aid kit. You hypo. Good. Lord knows I'll need it. Oh wow, uses uses all of your mana? Wow. That sucks. It doesn't regen either, does it? Eating regenerates it though. Cream filled cake. What if I just ate that out of the garbage? Okay. Potato chips. Go that way. Put plasma. There we go. Uh oh. I saw a little girl crawling there. It's like cigarettes regenerate mana. Food regenerates health.
It looks like uh, drinks trade mana for health. Dead cat. Oh, poor kitty. Fuck. Give him the combo. Zap him, then whack him. One two punch. Remember, the one two punch. I would need mana for that. Don't fucking judge me! You're only making this hard for us both! <laughs> His little face. <laughs> who's, who's there? Call the cops on me! Oh god. Yeah, we're playing on hard. Report me, you fuck! I was just getting a little on shot! Maybe we should have to down with me down here! Ryan! Where's my killer, son of a bitch? Yep. Uh, I, I, the second game fixes the, the, the this game's problem with combat where you can only have either the plasmid or your wrench at a time. Listen, I've got a family. I need to get them out of here. But the splicers have cut me off from them. If you can reach them in Neptune's bounty, then maybe, just maybe, I know you must feel like the unluckiest man in the world right now, but you're the only hope I'll ever see my wife and child again. Go to Neptune's bounty. Find my family, please. Follow the compass to your goal. Get right, lady. Plasmids changed Ooh. everything. They destroyed our bodies, our minds. We couldn't handle it. Best friends butchering one another. Babies strangled in cribs. The whole city went to hell. Hello. So, I'm guessing she's an NRA member if her baby is a gun? Rapture Masquerade Ball, 1959. Oh, there's stuff down there. Tom Whiskey. What the? What the? Whoa. Headshot. Charlie, where are you going? Charlie! Ah, Charlie! You killed my Charlie! You killed my Charlie! This is this right? I just spliced up. Nobody's gonna want me. I'll kill you, my Charlie! I'll kill you! What are you doing? I didn't kill Charlie, I swear. Oh, that's some nasty looking water. Hey, Brenda. 
You care to tell me why you've had a hole in the wall the size of Plymouth Rock coming out of your crapper going on three weeks now? Now, I ain't saying I'm Shakespeare. I'm trying to run a respectable theater. I got work and folk coming in from Port Nipton trying to catch a little And all I can think about is the stink coming out of your shitter. Get it fixed. <laughs> God. Best diary ever. What are you doing? While my heart just still so much. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Would my every Gotcha. Whew. Okay. First aid kits are everywhere right now, which is good. I want to freaking need them. Merlot. Double the dollars. I can't see. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I am drinking on the stream again. I apologize for that. Pistol bullets, even better. And more dollars. Um, these aren't openable. Okay. I will need every bullet, so I gotta scavenge every little corner. If you spot the boys are in the water, hit them with the electro bolt. Yeah, get wrecked. <laughs> ah, Some good stuff right there. Another New Year's, another night alone. Hold on one second. Let's lower down that and that. I'm out and you're stuck in Festus. Working. Huh. Imagine my surprise. Oh, I guess I'll have another drink. <laughs> Here's a toast to Diane McClintock. Silliest girl in Rapture. Silly enough to fall in love with Andrew Ryan. Silly enough. Oh God. What, what happened? Oh, I'm, I'm bleeding. Oh God. What's happening? What is going on? Pet bar. Hey, this place is absolutely creepy. Eight dollars. Oh yeah, we gotta go through the bathroom. Remember we found that path upstairs. You know, playing this again, wow, I missed that. Playing this again rem reminds me just how much how much system shock is in this game? Do not touch my gun! Where did you come from, lady? I like how they hide and loot in every nook and cranny. System shock? Oh, if you haven't played system shock. That's what they made before this one. That's why there's so much system shock. Wow, look at the size of that flashlight. Holy shit. That's a big flashlight. That is so long. What is 
that. You think that's a child down there? Don't be fooled. She's a little sister now. Somebody went and turned a sweet baby girl into a monster. Whatever you thought about right and wrong on the surface, well, that don't count for much down in Rapture. Those little sisters, they carry Adam. The genetic material that keeps the wheels of Rapture turning. Everybody wants us, everybody needs us. Uh, game, would you kindly give me more bullets, please? Uh oh, little girl, you better run. He's got a gun. Oh, shit. me not to hit one little girls press p to save your game my p it's, a, it's an odd button to see the game. she didn't even take the money what the hell's wrong with Here's her subscriber thanks for subbing viviox You've unlocked an episode of Director's Commentary. Play it now or view it later from the main menu. Spoiler warning. The commentary contains in-depth discussion of plot details, including the ending. Maybe it's a quick game for viewing. Um, do we do it now or later? Because it might spoilers. It might do spoilers. So I might not want to do that right now. For some people that haven't played this game before. All right, we'll play it. Hey, I'm Jeff Keeley here in oh my Boston gosh, Jeff. to go behind the scenes to hear some untold stories about the making of Bioshock with Ken Levine and Sean Robertson. This game is 11 years old. I, I, it's fine. Let's talk a bit about the theme and setting of Bioshock, Rapture. Uh, I think a lot of people, when they played the game for the first time, Ken, they wondered, how did you even dream up this place? And I know you've said publicly before that part of the reason you sort of, what led you to Rapture was this idea of fully simulating a place. Uh, tell us about that sort of idea and the frustrations you had with other games where there, you sort of hit a bound. I think our philosophy is, was always to do what we were doing 100% rather than try to do something bigger and do it 50% or 40%. So one of the ideas of, you know, and this sort of came from System Shock 2 as well, where you focus on an area that you can really bring to life and you kind of eliminate the questions of, well, why can't I go over the bridge to New Jersey? So we were able to really make a place, I think, that felt believable and real, even though in actuality it was really quite limited. But we just sort of dressed it with all these buildings outside that were all, you know, they were all basically glorified fakes. We let the story drive 
what we needed to show rather than some kind of like predetermined map which we sat down, which is a little different than like System Shock 2 where we actually mapped a spaceship out deck by deck. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't know why the, the philosophy felt a little different there because you want to feel like a real spaceship that was, that was sort of stacked on top of each other. But Rapture was free to sprawl across the ocean floor. Although you guys originally, Sean, were talking about doing this game on a sort of spaceship again, right? Yeah, when we first started talking about what the spiritual successor to System Shock 2 was going to be, Spaceship came up, but again, you know, we, we wanted a limited environment and we didn't necessarily want to do Spaceship again. And our first actual exploration of this space was underwater, but ultimately ended up looking like a spaceship. It just happened to have a couple of you know, seaweed fronds out, outside. And that started to push us towards uh, what artistic statement that we wanted to make to make this look different and what rules we were going to set for the world. How at every turn we were going to try to remind the player that they were in fact underwater and that this wasn't a spaceship. And how, like, underwater, we obviously know you did underwater, then sitting in the sky, like, what, where did you come up with the idea of, like, doing this underwater? I think there was probably a conversation. It's like, well, w what kind of places could be cut off from from yeah. other places? Yeah. Like, well, you know, a spaceship, a summer camp, <laughs> uh, you know, like yeah. any island notion, right? Something that's cut off from the rest of the world. Yeah. So you never felt like you should be able to go over that bridge to New Jersey. I don't want to apply some deep and meaningful conversation. I think it was one of those ideas that you just kind of say, and then everybody, huh, oh, that well, sounds cool. Let's try that. Let's, let's go for it. And, and it, I think it lended itself to having very nice views out the window without having to build an insane amount of unique assets. Right. By today's standards, we still were a small team back then. And there's an expectation that because you're underwater, the view distances are going to be short. So you can really kind of fade out into the fog at a short distance and not have the expectation that, why can't I see forever? So there's a lot of limitations in a good way that we put on ourselves by, by being underwater, as opposed to like if you're on a cruise ship, then you'd expect to see across the water and we'd have to deal with that. Same thing with an island. Or and you have a city in the sky. Where you're yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> Which was a lot more complicated. Yeah. yeah. So you, you came up with the idea of let's do this underwater, let's do this sort of isolated place. Then you had to answer the question of, you know, why would someone build this? Is that sort of how it worked, sort of order of operations? You then had to come up with a story to explain? Yeah, uh, it, I think the, we wanted a very believable reason why they'd be there. Right. And sort of the, the necessary isolation of, of the place sort of led to... Audio is terrible kind of in this video, by the way. ...want to do this. And um, I wasn't even particularly aware of the sort of political implications of what I was reading, but I've been reading, um, I had read The Fountainhead. Right. Um, by Ayn Rand, and I mostly thought it was an interesting story. Like, I didn't realize that people were sort of basing their sort of political totally. lives around it, because yeah. um, I wasn't that tuned in to that stuff at that point. And so, but I love the the dialogue and the kind of speechifying in it, because you can see a video game character yeah. speaking with that kind of certainty and that kind of confident um, philosophy. It just seemed like a, a natural, a natural kind of thing to apply to, to this place, and so it just sort of all came together as a very, as a sort of a, a, a who is the guy who would do this? Well, right. you know that character, Jeff, and the um, guy in the end are both sort of this amalgamation pant of characters rollers. from Ayn Rand's books and Ayn Rand herself. This sort of idealistic person who says, "Well, the only way to do this is to separate from the rest of the world," right. and that led to Andrew Ryan. I am Andrew Ryan. And I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled? Okay, this is very long and not very interesting, so... <laughs> we'll, we'll do that, we'll do those at the end. I thought that'd be like a quick clip, but no, that's like really, really long and breaking the immersion. <laughs> we'll watch those later. Gotcha. And did you say tramp? Wow. And how many bullets could that woman take? God damn, I hit her like a thousand times. Leave me alone! <laughs> Come on! I just want to talk! <laughs> 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 
Okay. <laughs> he just wants to talk. I know. Try not to waste too many bullets. It's hard to hit them in the head. Actually. <laughs> How shocking. Four dollars. I'll take it. Oh, they killed a big daddy. What the hell? You can't kill big daddy. One thing that's always bothered me about this game is that I can't have both hands out at once. It's like... Imagine if real life was like this, where you can only have one of your hands all usable at a time. Whiskey. Take the dollars. Security alert in progress. God damn it! Come on now. This isn't right. Gotcha. Man, aim in this game is tricky. They have a lot of quick movement. Makes it really hard to hit with a pistol that shoots very slowly. Yeah, it's it's hard to get a headshot and dodge shot. I need to get up there again, though. I want that loop. Oh, shit. I... There's loot up there, but I can't reach him now. Damn it! Damn it! No! Okay, saving. Oh, is there a mouse fix for this game? Oh, I could... That would be lovely if there's a 